Today, we're gonna to be making some fractals in Blender. Now, maybe some of you just clicked on this video because the thumbnail looked good. So really quickly, let's go over what a fractal actually is because that could give us some more insight and give you some more insight onto how we're gonna be doing our setup in Blender. According to Wikipedia, a fractal is a geometric shape containing a detailed structure at arbitrarily small scales. And yeah, there's also a bunch of other stuff in that definition. You know what, I'll just explain it to my way. A fractal is what you get when you take a base shape, a small shape that can either be 2D or 3D, and overlay it over itself so that the end result of all of those overlaid shapes looks exactly like a bigger version of the original base shape. Sound confusing? Maybe I'll show you. All right, so here we are in Blender. So this is the fractal. It's kind of hard to see because of the cinematic lining I put on. So let's just go into our pre-rendered mode and there we go. So if you look closely and you, you're gonna see what I mean, I'm just gonna quickly tab into the geometry notes tab. If we look closely at our fractal, we can see that it's made out of a bunch of little icospheres. I'm gonna set our iterations up to one so it's easier to see. There we go. So it's made out of a bunch of icospheres, and on each vertice of the base icosphere, there's another icosphere. And if we look out, zoom out for a little bit, and we look at it as a whole, we can start to see that it actually looks like a giant icosphere made out of smaller icospheres. So that's the beauty of fractals. And with this geometry node setup that I'm using, we can make it more procedural. So you can type in as many iterations as you want and Blender would comply and uh, scale up the fractal. So if I set the iterations to two, now each of those little buds coming off from the center are gonna get their own buds. And you can go up to three and four and five. And then when you get past that number, Blender is going to start lagging and will probably crash. So please save your work while you're working with these geometry nodes, fractals, and in general with geometry nodes, it's always a good idea. So this is uh, our fractal at three iterations. Now I'm not going to bore you with more of me yammering about how beautiful fractals are. Let's get into how the geometry nodes set up. So we start with a group input. This can be any 3D shape you want. It can be an icosphere, it can be a cube, it can be a Suzanne head, although I would not recommend that as the geometry goes off the charts. And then we're gonna put it into our repeat input. This is like our main slider to tell us how many iterations we want on our geometry. As you could see, I was just playing around with that to show you how many iterations we can have. Next, there's some more technical parts of the geometry nodes. I'm not gonna bore you with explaining them, but really quickly, this is just, we're getting some data from the mesh and we're joining it all together into this fractal so far. Next, we're going to amplify that with a repeat output, set a mesh to curve with a curved circle. This is all to minimize the amount of lag in our viewport and also to give us this nice kind of pixelated look. Finally, we set a shade smooth on the face, so to even out some of the more raw angles of the fractal and to make everything look more professional. And then we set our material. So if I go into our rendered mode and I tab over to Cycles instead of Eevee, you can see I've got this pretty little glass material on. Now you guys can skip the video uh, to the end now, but if you wanna know how I made that, I'm gonna pop over to the shading tab really quickly and give you a good look. Over here, let's set our thing so you can still see it. I just use a glossy BSDF, a transparent BSDF, and I mix them together using a mix node with the roughness of the glossy BSDF set to 0.5. I drove the factor of the mix shader node using a layer weight with a blend of 0.5, just to say like half and half, that's what we want. And then finally, I put it into the material output and that's how we have this beautiful little texture on. Now, make sure that once you've made this texture, you actually have to have a special node for this in the geometry node setup. Otherwise, you can't just assign it like normal to your projects. You have to go here to your and add a set material node. And then at the end of our geometry node setup, plug it in so that it assigns the material and then outputs. I was, that's a really um, not very intuitive thing, but that's how it works with geometry nodes. 
So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please like and subscribe and consider leaving me a comment below to tell me what videos you want to see next. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.